because he did that, he set the tone for every other player. Whoa, if Bill Belichick's going to light into Tom Brady, I better stand up in my chair right now and pay attention. Well, Mike, thank you so much for jumping on. It is time to go straight to the source, as in the source. For New England Patriots, news and information for the past 26 years. That is a long time to be with one team. He is ESPN's NFL Nation Patriots reporter, Mike Reese. Of course, Aaron Coscarelli with BVM Sports. So you joined the Patriots all the way back to 1997, which means you were there during the Pete Carroll era. Uh, you preceded the Tom Brady, Bill Belichick marriage uh, by a few years. But when you look back at your experience, of course, covering one of the most successful dynasties uh, to do it, of course, in the past history, you've got nine Super Bowl appearances, six world championships. Uh, what for you, Mike, would you say stands out to you the most? Aaron, the long seasons. You know, you <laughs> mentioned those Super Bowl championships, right? And the division championships. They would consistently be playing you know, into late January, early February. So, you know, the championship moments obviously always stand out. Um, I always go back to Tom Brady. You know, he played, think about this, he played 41 playoff games as a member of the Patriots. So everyone says, oh, he spent 20 seasons with New England. And I would say it was really 22 and a half because yeah. he played two and a half extra seasons. And Aaron, I'll never forget after one Super Bowl, it would, you know, early February, like I get home, it's like a long grind. And a couple weeks later, I got the, the suitcase packed by the door. And my wife says to me, like, where are you going? I said, it's the combine. And she goes, the season just ended. Like, what are you doing? Like, and it was like, those so those long seasons. That's what stands out to me the most. You almost become conditioned to know that your season's going from like the start of training camp in mid to you know late July to early February. Yeah, which means you didn't have a lot of vacation time as a beat reporter for the Patriots. Not a very long off season for Mike Reese. Well, I wanna get to Bill Belichick, Tom Brady stuff a little bit uh, more, but first I do wanna talk about present day Patriots because there's a lot of question marks around the future of Mac Jones, right? Bill O'Brien said uh, it's a clean slate. He had a good rookie year, but has since sort of struggled. What do you think the future holds for Mac Jones and the now addition of Bill O'Brien to the team? So the addition of Bill O'Brien is going to be critical um, to get Mac back on track. So I think if you watched him, you, you summed it up perfectly. In 2021 as a rookie, he was ascending. And everyone here in New England was like, this is great. First round pick, 15th overall. If you were to stack those five first round quarterbacks that year, Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, Mac might have actually been, you know, one of at the time, actually, they were saying maybe better than Trevor Lawrence. But we see how that's flipped because Mac regressed in his second year, Trevor Lawrence elevated. So basically, Aaron, like, what I see is they're trying to do what the Jaguars did for Trevor last year with a new coach, new system, get him back to what they think he can be. And they feel confident they can get him there. What do you think happened? Why do you think he regressed? So, so much, so many things. So start with Josh McDaniels, the offensive coordinator, leaving to become Raiders head coach. Bill Belichick makes a decision and says, we're going to do a pretty much a whole new offense. Mm. We're going to hire two coaches to sort of lead that offense and Matt Patricia and Joe Judge, whose primary backgrounds in the NFL were never on offense. Put all those things together, coupled with Mac himself. Like there were some things Mac could have done better himself. And it's sort of all the ingredients come together to lead to the regression that we saw. I look at this team and... It's almost like when I was at USC, it was the national championships year after year. You had this high expectation. And like you said, Mike, eight and nine, it is very unlike the Patriots dynasty we've seen. Who do you feel is feeling 
the most burden to bring this team back to what it was. Bill O'Brien, Belichick, Kraft, Mac. Yeah, I, I think they all share a little bit in that. For me, I sort of go the common sense route. And I say, if I'm Bill Belichick, and I just sort of look at the facts, since Tom Brady left, the team is right around 500 with no playoff victories. Coming off a season in which his own decisions with the offensive coaches led to a product that was, I would say, below the standard offensively than we've been accustomed to seeing in New England. So to me, that's the pressure. If you're Belichick, it's like, I gotta get this thing back up and running the way that I know I can after I miscalculated with my decisions last year. And, and to your point about Robert Kraft, look, in 2020, Kraft essentially had a decision. Like he he was hoping Belichick and Brady would would realize, in my view, that they were better together. They couldn't get to that point, Aaron. And so Kraft basically had to say, well, am I sticking with the quarterback or the coach? And I think he measured it out. And he said, look, you know, the play, like Brady was just turning 40, a little over 40. Like there's only so many years left. With Bill, more time, right? And the coach versus a player, there's a lot going on there. So I think there's pressure in his mind to say, well, I'd like to show people that the decision I made was sound, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a controversial question because the Patriots have only gone to the postseason once since Brady's departure. I don't think that Kraft made the wrong decision. Like you mentioned, all of those reasons an aging quarterback Although Bill is 71, and I want to get to what you think his moves are going to be in the future. But what caused the division in their relationship? Because there was something there, right? With Alex Guerrero not being able to be on the plane. You know, there was some kind of... Was it ego? Was it miscommunication? Was it a lack of appreciation what caused this division and you've been with the team for well over 20 years so you know this team inside now when, when did you start to see that there was some issues there with head coach and, and QB so Aaron it's a it's in my view it's a combination of a little bit of everything right I mean some of the things that you mentioned some of it's just time mm -hmm. like 20 years is a long time when you're the alpha coach and the alpha quarterback mm -hmm. to be together. And my view of it is that Tom Brady for a long time was an uncommon superstar willing to put himself in a lower category, allowed, I don't wanna say allowed, but took the grief and the, the constant competitive stamina and because he did that, he set the tone for every other player. Whoa, if Bill Belichick's gonna light into Tom Brady, I better stand up in my chair right now and pay attention. And I think after 20 years, like sometimes you think to yourself like, yeah, maybe a little more appreciation or maybe a little less, you know, like, or maybe I just wanna hear a different voice. And on the other side, if you're Bill, maybe you, you look at it and say, Maybe uh, I could have pulled back a little bit or maybe could I have done something like, so there's a lot going on there, right? That would, we would need more time to really get into it. But I think it's a combination of everything that you mentioned. Yeah, it's a really interesting relationship. If you really deep dive it into these two madmen who are so driven by competition by winning and what really happened behind closed doors we'll never really know uh, unless Brady comes out with some documentary and then you know we all sort of we find out uh his perspective certainly but it is interesting to hear you say Bill leaned into Brady almost as setting a tone or an example for the other men and you wonder how 
Bill evaluates that now, right? Because he was so hard on his son, if you will, and maybe it was a good thing and, and maybe it wasn't. Yeah. And, and if I know Bill from covering him, and I'm not saying I do, because there's a lot aside, he, he doesn't let you get too close, Aaron. I, I think he would say no regrets. Mm -hmm. No player is bigger than the team and the program. And it will always be about the team. And that every his intention with every decision he would say to this day was true. And he's not always going to make the right decision. But at the time that he made the decision, you know, he felt that way. And I would just flip it around, Aaron. Like if he said, if he went to Tom, Tom, it's important to me that you finish your career as a Patriot. What do we need to do? Mm. Like that would be very un belichick like to do that. But I think we would have a different ending. Right now, I shouldn't say that for sure, because what if Tom said, well, you know, like this contract, this this player and and I'm Bill. And in fairness to Bill, Aaron, Antonio Brown, you know, brought him in for Tom trading for Mohamed Sanu, a second round pick. That was a big pick. Didn't work out trying to do it for Tom. There were times where the visiting locker room was set up so Tom could have his training set up in like. So I think in Bill's view, he would say, look, I did make more concessions than I would for a normal player at, you know, towards the end, towards the end of the time, you know, so a lot going on there. Do you believe Bill Belichick is the greatest coach to ever coach NFL football? So that's a tough one for me to answer, Aaron, just because I've only been around on this planet for 47 years, you know, and I, I don't want to do a disservice to those who came before him. But I would say the numbers, I'm a big numbers person to support any argument. He has 329 career victories, counting the playoffs, regular season and playoffs. Don Shula's all time at 347, number one. I think he's gonna pass him because I don't see an end right now in sight for Bill. 71, as you mentioned. Um, so to me, if he passes Don Shula for all time wins list, a strong case to be made he's the greatest of all time you can I, that would be an argument i would be comfortable making i like that argument it's very politically correct but you're right <laughs> let the numbers do the talking one of bill's most incredible skill sets as a coach is being able to like you said evaluate talent like he's brought in guys that were struggling on other teams and he's obviously researched them and they've become very talented and successful and uh, contributed a lot to the success of post of past teams. What is it about Bill? Do you think that he is so good at evaluating men who other teams think are just, uh, you know, guys that it's time to kind of move on from? A good question. Um, so I think a big part of it was his experience in Cleveland when he was the head coach there, 1991 to 95, and probably um, having a system and identifying players that would fit in that system. So I, I don't wanna tell the story wrong, but I believe Scott Pioli, who was the vice president of player personnel for the Patriots in the early 2000s when they won their first three Super Bowls, who had a connection with Bill, tells a story about Warren Sapp, great player coming out of college. But it was like he didn't necessarily fit what Bill Belichick's team was going to do. So they didn't have him rated as high. And there was almost like a reconciliation between, well, wait a minute, this guy's a great player. But we would be asking him to do something in our scheme that's different than what he was doing in college that made him a great player. So I don't know if I explained it well, Aaron, but I think those, that would be one thing I would say, like those early career experiences for Belichick when he was young in the head coaching role, sort of set a foundation for him in not, you know, in valuing personnel and how it would fit in their specific system. I get that. It's not just about talent. It's also the emotional maturity to be able to fit in the system with Bill's overall scheme and what he wants to do in New England. And speaking of Bill, obviously you said it, he's 71, his 24th season, entering the 24th season um, with New England. 
uh, you know, we talk about he's 71. How much longer can he do it? You say there's there's no potential end in sight. You know, how long is he going to be able to do this? He's really remarkable, Aaron, in this sense. You know, I mean, at, at that that age, he didn't think he would still be coaching back in 2009. They did a documentary on him, Football Life, I believe it was, Bill Belichick. And he said, I'm not going to be like Marv Levy coaching into my 70s. He had said that. And I think what happened is, you know, he jumped ahead a little bit and didn't realize how he would feel in his 70s. And I think he believes since that point, or at, at some point he learned, like age is just a number. I love what I'm doing. He says he's never worked a day in his life because he loves it. He's got two of his sons on staff. I mean, so there's some quality there for, that he's getting um, that balances it out. And honestly, Aaron, like he's still good at what he does. Like I know there's a talk up here in New England. Oh, what's he done since Brady's left? Fair conversation. I mentioned it earlier in our conversation, the record since Brady's left. Team's still competitive, right? I mean, until it falls off. I mean, I don't know who else you'd want to coach your team, right? So I look at it like he's going for that record, 18 away from tying. They get two seasons, three seasons. Like if you want to start to drill down on a number, like I think he said, you know, he doesn't really get into like how important that is to him, but I'm going to sort of make the assumption that it's really important to him. He's dedicated his life to coaching. Why wouldn't it be, right? So to me, I put it at how long will it take to break that record, you tell me? And as long as it's not four wins, yeah, and not crawling to it, you know, four wins, four wins, four. Like I think if he's in the seven, eight, nine, ten win range, he's gonna keep going here. And 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 I believe the Patriots will keep him here because he gives them the best, still gives them the best chance to win and compete for those championships. And let's not forget, too, you know, when Brady was with the Patriots, the AFC East isn't what the AFC East is now. It's so much more of a competitive division. Um, and it's interesting because you have to wonder if Brady, if, if Brady winning a Super Bowl with another team is maybe, I don't know, you know Belichick better than me, driving a little bit of, Be of Belichick's motivation to get that monkey off his back in the sense of it was all Brady doing it. Because now since he's been gone, they've only seen the postseason once. What do you think about that? Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if there was some thought process in his mind. I, I don't think that's what drives him though. Like mm -hmm. I think what drives him is just the day-to-day, -day, like loving what he does. There's nothing else he would rather do and be around football in the game. Now, Aaron, if we talk about, like, I, I picture it this way. When he's up for the Pro Football Hall of Fame, they're going to mention his name in the room, and all these voters are going to be in there. And I would think a lot of people say, okay, this is one of the greatest coaches of all time. And then I think there might be uh, some voices in the room that say, well, let me just present to you a couple different things. Like, what was his record without Tom? You know, and how does this affect our discussion? Fair or not? And 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 then some of the other things around the team, like how much do we want to hold some of these NFL penalties that were handed down, whether you view them as fair or not? You know, like those are the two things that I think people are going to talk about with his candidacy outside of the numbers that I gave, you know, that we talked about the all-time wins. So I think it's part of the discussion. For me, I think he's still a first ballot if I was a voter, which I'm not, Aaron. But I mean, those those voters wouldn't be doing their job telling the whole story if they didn't at least bring that stuff up in conversation. Right. And it is it is such a important and interesting conversation. And I appreciate you going there with me because I know Brady's been gone from the Patriots for a few years. But that relationship and what we saw them do together and then what ended up happening in terms of Brady deciding to leave and Bob Kraft making that ultimate decision, of, like you said, going with the more long-term option, it is one of the most impactful relationships that we don't know a lot about. And 
obviously you, you, you have your finger on the pulse. You're there uh, in New England and you've been there. Um, and it's just as a fan of the game, it's more than football. It's, it's deeper than that. It's like two men who have so much competition and drive and motivation and to see what they did together. It is, it's a fascinating look into the world of the NFL. It's awesome. I loved, I loved seeing it because I think being around them, just even residually as a reporter, you feel like you're around excellence in the coaching and excellence as a player at the highest level. Some of that, you know, you hope um, you can take some of that and apply it to what we do, right? And, and, and I think the words competitive stamina is what keeps coming back to me. Like those two, like Brady telling the story, Aaron, like what's your favorite Super Bowl ring? The next one, like, like, you don't, you know, you win one and it's like, you're already talking about the next one. You're wired differently, you know, and Belichick wiping the slate clean, you know, at the Super Bowl parade, Aaron, you know, no days off, no days off. It's like, really? Like, but that's, that's who they were, you know, and that's who they are. Yeah. Fascinating. Absolutely interesting. Uh, Mike, you are in a class of your own in terms of NFL reporters. I, I really appreciate the insight on uh, the Patriots, the future, Tom Brady and Belichick. So thank you so much. Awesome, Aaron. Thanks for having me.